What's good, y'all? This is Evan from DMV Sports Zone giving you another update on the Washington Nationals. So this past weekend was, well, a lot happened. It was really emotional. The Padres put up 24 runs on Friday, and then there was the shooting, the shooting incident on Saturday, and my prayers are are with everybody that was involved and all of their families. And ultimately, the weekend ended with the Nationals losing two out of three to the Padres and getting the one win on a very emotional walk-off by Alcides Escobar, which the city really desperately needed. So up next for the Nationals, they got a three-game series at home against the Miami Marlins. Now, the Marlins come into this series with a record of 40-53, and 53, their last place in the NL East, and they just got done losing three out of four in Philadelphia, including playing a playing a pseudo doubleheader similar to what the Nats did yesterday, except they got, got moved back because of rain. Now, the Nats have beaten the Marlins four out of seven earlier this season, including sweeping Miami last time they came to Nats Park. And to and to add on to uh, to add on for the Marlins, they will be without their star Jazz Chisholm. So after the Marlins leave town, the Nationals will have a day off and then head to Baltimore for a three-game series with the Orioles. Now the Orioles are currently thirty and sixty-two, their last place in the AL East. They have the worst record in the American League and the second worst record in baseball ahead of only the Diamondbacks. Now, the Nationals have seen the Orioles earlier this season and they swept Baltimore in a three-game series in D.C. at the end of May. So that means the Nats only need one win in this series to claim victory in the Battle of the Beltway, or as some call it, the Masson Cup. So then after this, the Nationals head to Philadelphia for a four-game series with the Phillies. The Phillies are currently 47 and 45, second place in the NL East, and the season series is dead even between these two at four wins apiece. Now, the last time the Nats visited Citizens Bank Park, there was the whole fiasco with Max Scherzer getting checked by, like, by umpires three different times. Joe Girardi had a meltdown, got ejected, and then both teams forgot how, like, forgot how to play defense, and the result was fireworks. Ultimately, the Nats swept that series. Now, like now, this will be the Nationals' third and final visit to Philadelphia, and Washington currently has a record of three and two in the city of brotherly love. And then finally, the Nationals will return home for a three-game series against the Chicago Cubs, which will take us into August. Now, the Cubs are currently forty-six and forty-seven. They're tied with St. Louis for third in the NL Central, and Chicago has a three-to-one lead over Washington in the season series. Now, while a lot of teams in baseball are considering whether to buy or sell at the trade deadline, it looks like the Cubs are intent on selling as they've already shipped off a key piece in Jock Peterson away to Atlanta. Now, here's some key, key things to keep track of over the next two weeks. First of which, Juan Soto. Now, Juan Soto participated in the Home Run Derby and had an epic duel with Shohei Otani, with Soto ultimately coming out on top in the three-pitch swing-off. Now, there's usually a lot of talk around this time of year how the home run derby supposedly ruins a player's swing, but Juan Soto in the short sample size, and the albeit short sample size, has proven anything but. Now, this past series against the Padres might be the one the Nets as a whole don't want to remember, but Juan tore it up over this past weekend. He had seven hits and three home runs. So... So it looks like the power is coming back to the childish Bambino. And also, while, uh, while teams in front of the Nets, I, albeit the Mets, the Phillies, and the Braves, their schedules might be starting to ramp up in terms of difficulty, the national schedule seems like it's kind of, kind of leveling out. How three of the Nets' next four opponents are currently below 500, and the only one that's above the, the Phillies recently got above 500 by hitting the lights out of the ball, by hitting the daylights out of the ballpark against the Marlins. Oh, and last but not least, there is the elephant in the room in terms of the trade deadline. Do the Nationals buy or do the Nationals sell? Now, I might make a separate video about this entirely, but in short, like the abridged version is basically damned if you do, damned if you don't. Like there, there's benefits to both and there's repercussions to both. So again, there might be an, like there might be another video on my timeline like from me next week. So be on the lookout for that. 
anyway guys that's my update so be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to see more content from me and the rest of the dmv sports zone zone crew and until next time i'm evan signing off